Hello, my name is Kate and I'm a principal consultant at Analysis Prime. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the 2024 QRC2 update that expands the APIs in Stories that enables you to connect to your SAC calendar. You can now create and manage processes directly from the Story interface rather than previously when it was task by task base. Today, I'll show you the new APIs available, give you a basic overview of the syntax and functionality, as well as talk through the numerous potential options this can open up for you. The ultimate end use is the ability to be able to fully interact with your calendar function in SAC, but do so directly from a story for end user ease. So you can see here that I've basically set up pretty standard looking story, um, very basic. I've got a table in here with my operating income for my plan data. Uh, I've got some filters handful of buttons and three open text boxes. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new process, update and activate that process. I'll show you under the hood and also talk through um, what additional possibilities this opens up. So to start, I will go ahead and create my brand new process that I want to create using these inputs. Again, for ease, I'm just using text box inputs. Um, you could also use automatic functions, you can grab text from somewhere else. Again, the choices are really up to you depending on um, what level of setup you want to create. Start date, uh, I put a button here just for today, populates that for today. Users could obviously update, edit this. You don't have to use the today button. Again, options are endless and up to you. And let's say I want this done by the end of the month. So I'll put the end of May as my end date. And there we go. I've included these three because these are the bare minimum required in order to create a process. You can't create a process without giving it a name, a start date, and end date. It will throw you an error and you'll have to go ahead and re try to redo the, the process. So I'll hit create. And again, all that button is doing, and I'll show you under the hood here in a second, is going to just create that bare level process that just has the name, the start date, the end date. What I'm also having it do is it's saving the ID that is being generated for that unique process and saving it in a script variable in the application. That allows me to then reference it down here when I go ahead to update and activate. So again, just to show a few of these features, what I'm doing here now is I wanna update the process. Let's say I wanna assign it a specific filter for a specific product, a person responsible, um, assignee to it, et cetera. So I'm gonna come in here, Let's say I just want to be for some running shoes, search for my running shoes, apply that selection. So that's my table filter. And also let's say in the background, again, this is all previous setup in the background, I have a person responsible for running shoes. I'm just gonna hit that update process saying, hey, I want to update this process to you for this product and assign it to whoever the person responsible is. And again, I'll show you this all in the hood. I get a notification that the update, the change has been applied happened twice because I'm updating both the filter and the assignee. So now I've had that all set and now I want to actually activate and start the process. So I come here and hit activate process. And again, all the magic's happening behind the screen. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. But now I have an activated process. And again, similar here, you could add in um, notice notifications. You could add in messages that show down here uh, to indicate that the process has been started. Again, potential is up to you and how you want to set it up. So let's jump here and go and look under the hood. Now I'm in my actual builder for my story. And you can see this is what the user was seeing kind of on the front end, my input boxes, my different buttons, and my table. So I really only have a number of scripts in order to make this happen. The first thing most important is that you have a calendar integration type down here. Pretty easy, you just literally add a calendar type integration by the scripting. And then you're able to just give it a name if you want. I left it as the default, which is calendar integration one. I always put a planning model in an app just because I'm referencing that model could be useful, could get me information that I need. And then I've got a few basic script variables here as well. So let's go and let's start from the very first button I pressed, which was the create process button. So if I come here, I've got my code, as you can see, pretty straightforward, right? I've got my name and my start date and my end date in order to create that new process. So the name is pretty straightforward. It's just a general string. I'm just doing the input, getting the value from the input of that text box and saying, get that value and apply that to the name. 
start date and end date. The most important thing here is that they are in a date format. I have a little if statement to cover if today was selected. And then I've got the end date also as the get value. So from the text box and it's creating that value into a date format. That's why I have this new date function in here. So that's pretty important. Uh, if you don't have it in the date format, it's not gonna render and not gonna create your process correctly. So I'm doing the create process and then instantly within that same command, I'm also making sure that I get the new ID. Uh, as you may or may not be aware in SAC, every object has a pretty technical ID attached to it. For example, this story ID is this long string up here. Uh, the same goes for calendar processes. So it's generating this long, unique ID. So it's really important that you then store this ID if you want to be able to reference this process later down the road, which I do in this case. So I'm logging the get ID just to a general script variable. It just stores it as a, stores it as a string, pretty straightforward. So now that I've shown you how I'm creating that original process, let's go over to the update. Again, I put a few different options in here in terms of add context filter and add assignee. There's a whole list of APIs that can apply once you've created your, your calendar process. Because I knew I wanted to add a context filter based on what I'm grabbing from the filter in the story, as well as add the assignee, that's automatically the person responsible. That's where I have all this code up front. But essentially all I'm doing is I am adding a context filter for product that is based on what is selected in that input control. See, I'm getting the input control data source for that product input control, and ultimately putting it in the format that it needs to in order to render the context filter. It's a very specific type of variable in, within SAC, so you do have to have it in this kind of format where it is the hierarchy and then the members, and then you have the member description, ID, display ID, actual ID, and then the model ID as well. So it is very technical, but again, if you set this all up up front, all of this can be basically automated for the end user. So they're not having to go in and add each of these individually. Additionally, similar concept down here. I went and I simply got the person responsible, which is a function of models, got the person responsible for that ID I've selected. And I'm saying make them the assignee for this process. And again, once I then hit that button as a user, it did these two actions. It added a context filter and added an assignee. Again, straightforward. There's a whole number of different APIs that you can use once you've created that process. Um, for example, here's your extended list, essentially. Uh, I use these two to add a signee and add context filter. You can add owners, you can add reminders, as well as all the different get options. Those are just going to return those values to you in case you need to reference them somewhere else. Uh, you can remove them as well and also set. So if you want to change the name or reset the end date, uh, that's op option is there as well. Set a parent ID. This one's very key because it will allow you to, again, add children processes under that main parent. So let's say I want to then create another new task under this one I just created. I could do create new task, set parent ID, and then it would re and then reference this script variable I have saved. And therefore it will automatically then assign a child to this parent that I just created. So that's kind of a brief overview of what you can do. Again, the basic APIs are all in there and pretty easy to understand what they're used for. It's more just making sure you have everything in its correct format and that you can find the different pieces of information that you need and filter it in from anywhere in the application. So hope that helps. And I wanna thank you for watching. Please check out all of our other content about the new features available in the QRC2 update for 2024.